see is not a very fancy video. Usually I have something more put together on and today I'm literally wearing a giant t-shirt because I'm just not trying to fool y'all into thinking that I have my life together anymore because by this point you should know that's not true. But I'm coming at you with a really important video and even though I'm in the middle of wedding planning so I'm not like fully in the know of everything, I'll make another one. I have learned some things during this process that someone should have told me before I got this far. So I'm here to tell you these things. If you're not engaged, if you are engaged, if you're already married and you just want to hear all these things, please stay tuned because I got a lot of knowledge coming for you. So the first thing is, unless someone is paying for your wedding or they are like hugely important in your life, they don't get an opinion. This is very hard to live by because everyone has an opinion about your wedding and your dress and your fiance and your ring and your venue and everyone has all these opinions and all of a sudden you don't even know what you like anymore. Don't listen to those people unless they're really important. If your grandma thinks that your dress is a little low cut, maybe you should listen to her. And if the person paying for your wedding thinks your $500,000 flowers are a little aggressive, take that in mind. But if your friend from high school you don't even talk to all of a sudden decides that she doesn't like your dress and wants to let you know, probably you shouldn't listen to her. And I know this is really hard because this is your big day. So you want to take in everyone's opinion and be like, oh my gosh, I want it to be perfect. So I have to fix all this stuff. Okay, nothing's wrong with it. It's just not their taste. And that happens all the time. No one has the same taste. Well, not really, most people don't. So please do not take other people's opinions to heart because most likely they don't have your best interests at heart. And even if they do, they don't understand slash need to be involved. I know that sounds really bad, but they just don't because this is your wedding. So if you and your fiance like it, if whoever is paying for it is like, yeah, that's great. If that's you, if that's your dad, if that's your family, if that's whoever, and if the people whose opinions actually really matter are on board, then like, that's all you need. Like block everyone else out because everyone is going to come tell you that this is wrong and this is wrong. And you shouldn't be doing this. And like, this is your wedding. You only get this chance. I mean, not only, but you get this chance to make this exactly how you want it to be. So don't let everyone in your entire life come in and tell you how it's supposed to be because you will regret that later. The second thing that I wish I had known is that vendors are all trying to sell you something. I know that this sounds very obvious, but when you walk into that first place, so you walk into the first venue or you walk into the first photographer place, they are there to sell you something. Like, you have to be aware of that. So like, say you walk into the floral place. I haven't done this yet. So like, I don't know that this is true, but you're gonna walk in and they're gonna have it set up like all for you and blah, blah, blah. And it's gonna be perfect and amazing. And you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, we're best friends. You're not best friends, I'm sorry, but they're trying to sell you a product. So remember that. They may be the nicest people in the entire world. They probably are, but look at what they're actually telling you and what their prices actually are because you can get really caught up in like the excitement of like, oh my gosh, look how exciting this is. Like, this is great. Of course I love it. And then like, however many dollars later you're like, I didn't really need that. Like I got really caught up in that moment and I like signed on something I didn't even want. So really look at it, like take it home with you. That's what like we have been doing. Look it over make sure it's what you want. Like cross out things you don't want, like vendor shop, like really, really pay attention to what you're doing because they're really good talkers and they're really nice and they're the best people in the entire world. I promise you they're not bad people, but they are there to sell you something at the end of the day. So be very, very cautious of what you're signing and what you're doing as you're doing it. The next thing is, and this is situational obviously, but there is nothing so big in wedding planning that it should cause problems between you and your fiance. I have had this happen to me. Travis and I have very different opinions on a lot of things and I'm very like bullheaded and stubborn. So it's caused a few problems. So coming from experience and not exactly fun experience, don't let things in your wedding tear you guys apart. Like this is supposed to bring you guys together. So if for some reason he wants Okay, this is actually a real life. For instance, I wanted all the tuxes to be the exact same. All the groomsmen and his, I was like dead set. I wanted to be the exact same. He wanted his and his best man's to be different. And I was like, oh my God, that's gonna ruin everything. But like, then I thought about it. What is that actually gonna ruin? Absolutely nothing. And it would make him happy. Like it's his wedding too. And I had thrown this like huge fit over it. When in reality, it's not that big of a deal. The pictures are still gonna look beautiful. I'm gonna look back and think it was great. But at the time I was like, are you crazy? Like everyone's gonna look mismatched. So keep that in mind, nothing should be that big of a deal. Now, if you and your fiance get in a fight about something else and it's like a real like life problem that's just kind of coming out because the wedding is added stress, then pay attention to that. But if it's little stuff like that, that you guys are getting in like little fights over, don't let that happen because yeah, you want your day to be perfect, but in the end, like you wanna be marrying that person and that's what's most important and do everything you can to make the wedding beautiful and amazing, but 
don't let it tear you guys apart because wedding planning it'll do that to people. It has done it to us and it is like, we're fine now and everything's good. But for a second there, I was like, how dare you suggest that someone wears like something different. And then I was like, rein it in, you're losing your mind. So try and keep saying, even though during wedding planning, that's like really almost not an option. So keep your head together and don't let this get between you guys. So the next word of advice is not for everyone. This is not applied to actually many people, but I think it would be great. So Travis and I, we had a really long engagement. We've been engaged for like seven months now and we still have like eight months to go. So like that sounds crazy to some people, but a lot of the people I talk to who plan their wedding in like three months just because like they don't have to, they're just doing it that way, are so stressed and they like are pulling out their hair and everything is like going wrong and they're like rushing to do everything and it's fun, but it's like this huge fiasco. And if I can give you any kind of advice on that, start as early as you can but enjoy the process and try and have a little bit longer of engagement. Not long, like us, this is very long. Like that was just kind of something personal that we decided to do. And if you wanna have it that long, that's cool. But if you think you need three months to plan your wedding, like give yourself four because you want it to be a fun experience and something you'll remember forever. And you don't want it to be something that you're like, okay, we did floors today, we have to do cake tomorrow. Like we're already too late on everything else. So blah, blah, blah. Like, no, like calm down and breathe and try and space it out because you really want it to be fun and like a really good experience for you and your fiance and your family. You don't want this to become again, some huge problem and you don't want it to be a rush because that's how you let things slide and how things become not so fun. And like, this is your wedding. You want it to be fun. So take your time, take a deep breath. Things will work out, but try and give yourself a little space, like a little padding room for in case things don't go perfectly the first time and you have to get new vendors or something goes wrong, like give yourself a little bit of wiggle room and that's okay. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about, all of my friends will tell you not to listen to me probably in any regards to this because when it comes to money, I'm not the best um, at budgeting. I'm getting better at it, but let me tell you, we're gonna talk about budget and that's a very difficult thing because weddings just explode. Like that happens to many people and a lot of people, like everyone has budget pretty much, I mean, not everyone, obviously, but most people have a budget and it is really hard to stick to because there's things that you could have never thought about that you all of a sudden need and you have to have it. And like, it's actually important. It's not just like some stupid thing. So say, I mean, this is like outlandish, but say you have a million dollars for your wedding. Like pretend you only have like $900,000 because let me tell you, things are gonna fly into there that you didn't even know about. So like so many things that I was not aware of that we would have to pay for that I just forgot about. like marriage license and all that stuff that's pretty obvious but you don't a lot of people don't build that into their budget because it's so minute that they don't think about it but it still costs money like put it in there and like you don't think you think you're gonna pay this much for flowers but then you get there and you realize like oh flowers are actually more expensive because you ones you want aren't in season like give yourself a little space because the budget it's it's rough it's a very rough thing so just really concentrate on it and really think about what you're doing and give yourself again like a little bit of room like budget under because you're probably going to go over so if you budget and you do everything at the very top of your budget it's it's going to be really aggressive okay and another thing is if you are having a body transformation for your wedding aka what i'm trying to do i'm trying to lose all this weight and get my skin to clear up and get my hair to be like four feet long do not start that a month before your wedding. I see so many women and they're like, oh, I'm gonna lose 30 pounds in 30 days before my wedding. Do you know how stressful wedding planning is? Do you know how much cake you have to eat during wedding planning? Like you are not gonna lose 30 pounds a month before your wedding. I'm really sorry. Like maybe from stress, but like it is so much going on that you do not wanna be working out and like pulling your hair out, trying to lose weight, trying to get all this stuff done, trying to get your hair to be like this the month before your wedding, like give yourself some time. So I have eight months and I'm already working on like my workout and my fitness plan and I'm trying to get my skin clear, which is a whole nother discussion. And I'm trying to get my hair to grow because I know that all this stuff is not just gonna magically come together because I want it to the month before my wedding. Like you have to put the work in ahead of time because also again, and this is kind of the theme of the whole video, if you try and cram it in there, it's not gonna be fun. So you're trying to do all this stuff right before your wedding and there's other stuff going on. There's like bridal showers and bachelorette parties and all that stuff that you wanna be focusing on and you wanna be able to enjoy. So like, I wanna lose 40 pounds. I'm gonna try and get that off before August. My wedding's in October because I wanna enjoy those months because those are gonna be like some of the biggest months with all the stuff and I wanna be able to eat the cake at my bridal shower and go out and have drinks on my bachelorette party and not feel guilty about it because I'm not still trying to lose weight. And 
not everyone tries to lose weight for their wedding. This is kind of my thing. But like if it has to do with your skin too, like start early. You're not just going to be able to start a brand new skincare regimen and it work for you automatically like the month before and you're going to have perfect glowing skin. Like maybe that'll happen for you. But for most people that does not happen. So my advice is to start as early as possible and make it kind of like a lifestyle change because you want it to be fun and you want it to be lasting. And you don't want the months before your wedding to be super, super stressful because they're supposed to be the most fun time. Okay, so I probably have a lot more things to say, but I feel like these videos, I mean, they never end up actually being that long. I always think they're gonna be like 30 minutes and they're like four, but I'm gonna cut it off there because I feel like I'm not exactly a licensed professional at this kind of thing. And I don't know where this is gonna go from here. I feel like I'm gonna get really outlandish with some of the stuff that I say, but I just wanna give you guys some advice because I wish people had told me some of this stuff beforehand and they probably did and I didn't listen, but this is your like, this is your wake up call. Like listen to these things because these are gonna come up and they're gonna come up out of nowhere. So if you're planning a wedding, if you're not planning a wedding, like think about these things because they're very stressful and it's a stressful time, but you want it to be the most fun time ever. So really, really pay attention to what's going on and try and live in the moment. Don't try and think about your next appointment, your next vendor meeting. Try and actually enjoy and soak it all in because it's a super special time between like you and your fiance and you and your family and you really want to enjoy it. So those were my tips. That is my advice. If it doesn't work out for you, I'm not liable for that. Um, so I'm just here to tell you what I have experienced and maybe this won't be experience, maybe experience, maybe this will not be your experience. Maybe you'll have a beautiful experience. Everything goes right. Everything's perfectly in budget. You have perfect like skin and nails and all this stuff. Life kind of gets in the way for most people. So I would plan ahead <laughs> just in case. So those are my tips. Let me know if you want to see any different kinds of videos. I haven't done a wedding one in a while, which is why I did it. My bride boxes are kind of piling up, but no one really seemed to like those. So I kind of let that go. But if you guys want to see those, I still have them and I have all the stuff and I can show you guys. If you want to see other types of videos, let me know. Cause I'm kind of like conflicted between what I want to put out there content wise. Cause I don't really know what you guys like. So obviously you like the giveaways. I don't think that's because of the video. I think it's because of the giveaway. So let me know other than that, what you guys enjoy seeing. Cause I would love to make you guys content that you want to see. So that was it. Please don't forget to like and comment and subscribe and all the things that every YouTuber tells you. Cause it's great. Anyway, have an awesome day.